Welcome back to Everyday Physics. In this video, we're going to continue considering how a street lamp works. We're going to specifically look at series and parallel circuits. In this video, we're going to be considering a few of the details about how circuits can be wired. There's two general ways in which circuits can be wired, series and parallel. In a series circuit, the current flows through each component in the circuit sequentially. In parallel circuits, the current is divided so that there's a couple of devices that it can flow through before going, being combined and going back to the power supply. We can also have combinations of these two types of circuits. What we're going to look at now is a series circuit in some detail. So let's set up a series circuit now. In a series circuit, we need the current to flow sequentially through each component. So the current comes out of the power supply. So we put a wire into the power supply and now we'll send it through a switch so that we can turn the current off and on. From the switch, we'll go to our first light globe. And then from our first light globe to our second light globe. And from our second light globe to our third light globe. Now we need to close the loop so that there's a loop around which the current can flow. So we'll go back from our third light bulb to our power supply. OK, so let's turn the power on and see what happens. As you can see, when the power's turned on, each of the light globes lights up. Now let's look at the voltage and the current around this series circuit. The current's flowing from here and through each component. So we would expect the current to be constant throughout this circuit. Let's check that. Here's our ammeter. We'll plug this in at various points around our circuit. So coming out of the power supply, the current reads 2.3 amps. Now let's find out what the current is between our first and our second light globe. At this point in the circuit, the current is also 2.3 amps. So we've got the same current immediately out of our power supply as we do flowing between the first two light globes. Let's just have one final check. We would expect the current to also be the same between our second and our third light globe. And you can see our ammeter is reading 2.3 amps there as well. So remember that in a series circuit, we have the same current flowing through every component. Let's now consider what would happen with the voltage. Here we've got a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the circuit. This power supply is outputting 12 volts. Now remember that voltage is a measure of the amount of energy that's available to push the electrons through the circuit. As the current moves through the circuit, this energy is used up. So the 12 volts provided by the power supply will be used up by these three components going around the circuit. So we would expect the voltage drop across each of these components to approximately add to the 12 volts supplied by the power supply. It won't add exactly because these wires do have a small amount of resistance, so there will be a small amount of energy lost as the current flows through the wire. We'll use this voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across each of these components. Let's remove the ammeter for this part of the prac. Now this ammeter is actually called a multimeter because it can act as either a voltmeter or an ammeter depending on the setting. So let's use this multimeter now as a voltmeter to measure the voltage output from the power supply and we'll then use this voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across each of these light globes. Okay. 
Okay, so this multimeter is telling us that the power supply is providing 12.10 volts. Let's use this one now. So this voltmeter is measuring approximately 4 volts across this first light globe. Let's now move it and measure the voltage drop across the second light globe. So you can see we've got a voltage drop of approximately 4 volts just below across the second light globe as well. And a voltage drop of just below 4 volts across the third light globe. So summing up these voltage drops, we've got 4 volts here, 4 volts here and 4 volts here. This adds to approximately the 12 volts. These were all just below 4 volts and this is just over 12 volts, but the additional voltage drop is because these wires have a small amount of resistance. So the rules for considering series circuits is that we've got the same amount of current through all of the components and the voltage drop across each of the components adds to give the voltage provided by the power supply. Let's now use this information to solve a problem involving a series circuit. Imagine that we have a 12 volt power supply attached to three resistors. Resistor 1 has a resistance of 4.00 ohms. Resistor 2 has a resistance of 2.00 ohms and resistor 3 has a resistance of 2.00 ohms. We're asked to find the voltage and the current through each of these resistors. We know that the total current passes through each resistor. We can use this to calculate the total resistance. The total resistance is just equal to the resistance of the first resistor plus the resistance of the second resistor plus the resistance of the third resistor. So in this case it's equal to 4.00 plus 2.00 plus 2.00 which is equal to 8.00 ohms is our total resistance. So now we know the total resistance of the circuit. We also know the total voltage drop across the circuit. It's 12 volts, which is the voltage provided by our power supply. So we can use Ohm's law from the last video, V is equal to IR, to calculate the total current. The total current will be equal to the total voltage over the total resistance. So the total voltage drop is 12, the total resistance is 8, and solving that on your calculator you end up with 1.50 amps is the total current flowing through this circuit. And this total current flows through each of these resistors. So that allows us to calculate the voltage drop across each resistor because we now know the current flowing e through each resistor and the amount of resistance each resistor has. So we have V1 is equal to I1, R1. The current flowing through this is 1.50 and the resistance is 4.00. So solving that we get 6.00 volts. The voltage drop across the second one is I2, R2 which is equal to 1.50 times 2.00, which is 3.00 volts. And I3 and R3 are the same as I2 and R2, so this is also equal to V3. So now we've worked out the voltage drop across each of these resistors. We've got 6, then 3, then 3. We can just check that to ensure that they all add up to 12, 6 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to the 12 volts supplied by the power supply. Let's look at a parallel circuit now. In the parallel circuit, there's multiple ways in which the current can flow. So a parallel circuit is like a river breaking into two or three streams, then combining back together again to go to the sea. So to set up a 
parallel circuit we have a power supply. We can send some of the current through this first light globe here. You can see when we plug it in, it lights up. But now to make it a parallel circuit, we branch the current. So we send some of the current through this second light globe here. So these two light globes are now in parallel with each other. And let's add in a third light globe, also in parallel with these first two. So some of the current is flowing around these white wires, some is flowing around the yellow wires, and some is flowing around the blue wires. So we expect that all the current flowing out of the power supply is coming through this point here. Let's use an ammeter now to measure the total amount of current at this point in the circuit. So the current is now flowing out of our power supply through this ammeter and then once it leaves the ammeter it's branching to go through these three light globes before coming back to the power supply. You can see that the total current flowing through the circuit is 12.5 or 12.6 milliamps. So let's now have a look at how much current is flowing to each of these individual light globes. So this ammeter is telling us that 4.1 milliamps is flowing through this light globe here. Let's see how much current is flowing through our second light globe. There's 4.2 milliamps flowing through the second light globe. And we have 4.3 milliamps flowing through the third light globe. So adding these together, 4.1 plus 4.2 plus 4.3 gives us 12.6 milliamps. Yeah, and just confirming again, the current flowing through the total circuit is equal to 12.6 milliamps. So you can see that the current flowing through this globe plus the current flowing through this globe plus the current flowing through this globe add to give us the current the total current flowing through the circuit. So the total current which is flowing out of this power supply. Let's now have a look at how the voltages work in a parallel circuit. Remember that voltage is proportional to the amount of energy which is available to push the electrons through the circuit. Now as each of these light globes is attached to our power supply at the same point, we would expect there to be the same amount of energy at each of these points. So this is like a river. If it starts up in the mountains, the voltage is similar to the potential energy that it's got up at that, the top of the mountain. So rivers will flow down from the top of the mountain. That's because they've got gravitational potential energy, which is pushing them down. Here we've got electrical potential energy which is pushing these electrons around and all these points have the same amount of potential energy. And now the same is true of the negative side of our power supply as well. At this point all the energy has been used up by the circuit so there's no energy left when it's going into the negative side of the power supply. So as all of these are connected to the negative side of the power supply. There, we'd expect them all to have the same potential drop across them. And that potential drop should be equal to the potential energy supplied by this power supply. So let's just measure that now. We'll use this multimeter now as a voltmeter. So we switch it over here so that we can measure the voltage drop across each of these light globes. So the voltage drop across the first light globe is given by 11.99 volts. The voltage drop across our second light globe 
is given by 11.84 volts and the voltage drop across our third light globe is given by 11.90 volts. So you can see these all have approximately the same voltage drop across them. Let's just check that it's the same as the voltage supplied by this power supply. If we plug this directly across our power supply, we end up with 12.05 volts. Now it's slightly interesting that the power supply is supplying more voltage than the voltage drop across the light globes, but that will be explained because these wires do have some resistance. They're not all identical wires, so some will have more resistance than others, and it's that resistance which is using up some of that potential energy which is available to push the electrons around. And so the voltage across these light globes is slightly below what we would expect. Let's have a look at how we can use these relationships to solve a problem involving parallel circuits now. Okay, imagine we have this parallel circuit. We've got a 12.0 volt power supply. And then here we've got a 4 ohm resistor. Let's call this one R1, resistor 1. And then in parallel with that, we've got another resistor. This is R2. And it has a resistance of 2.0 ohms. And finally, we have a third resistor. R3, also with a resistance of 2.0 ohms. And we are asked to find the voltage drop across and current through each resistor and through the total circuit. Okay, so a good way to start this is we know that the current comes out of here. Some of it will go through R1, some through R2, and some through R3. We can use Ohm's law on each of these resistors to work out what that current is as we know that there's a voltage drop of 12 volts across each of these resistors. So use Ohm's law, which remember is V is equal to IR. So we know that the current through resistor 1, I1, is equal to the voltage across resistor 1, which is just the total voltage drop, over the resistance of resistor 1. So this is 12 over 4 which gives us 3.0 amps. Now the current through resistor 2 is given by V on R2, which is 12 over 2, which gives us 6.0 amps. And I3 is equal to V on R3, which is just the same numbers as here. So this is also equal to 6.0 amps. So we've got 3 amps, 6 amps, and 6 amps. So we know that the current flowing through the total circuit is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, which is equal to 3 plus 6 plus 6, which is equal to 15 amps. And we know that the voltage drop across the total circuit is the same as the voltage drop everywhere, so that's equal to V1, V2, V3, and that's equal to 12.0 volts. So now we've answered this question, but let's take it a little bit further. Sometimes it's useful to think what single resistor could we replace these three resistors in parallel with? This is called an effective resistance. So what So what we can do is we can work out the total resistance of these all combined by using Ohm's law for the total circuit. So we've got R total, just rearranging Ohm's law here to make R the subject. R is equal to V divided by I. So it's V total over I total. So that is 12 over the total current, which is 15, which gives us 0 0.8 ohms. So that's given us the effective resistance. Now there's another way we could calculate this effective resistance as well. 
Let's have a look at this equation here, along with Ohm's law. We know that I total is equal to V total on R total. And substituting in I1 is V1 on R1, I2 is V2 on R2. We've written these all down up here. Plus I3 is V3 on R3. But each of these is the same. They're all equal to V. So we can cancel these out. And so this gives us a formula for the effective resistance of resistors in parallel. 1 on R total, which is the effective resistance, is equal to 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3. And this formula holds for however many resistors we add in, pa in parallel. So as you add more resistors in parallel, you can see the total resistance is actually going to drop. That makes a lot of sense because it means that there's more paths through which that current could flow and so there's less resistance to the flow. So it's like adding extra roads into a road network, for example, should reduce the amount of resistance to that traffic flow. So series and parallel are the simple building blocks for circuits, but not all circuits have to be one or the other. We can have circuits which are a combination of the two. Let's set up a combination circuit now. What we'll do is we'll send all the current through this first light globe and then we'll send some of the current through this second light globe, some of the current through the third light globe and then send it all back to the power supply. And then we can look at the voltage and the current on a circuit such as this. What do you think will happen to these components when we wire them up this way? Let's have a look. Okay, so we need two wires coming out of this one so that the current has a choice about which globe it wants to flow through. So that you can see these globes clearly, we're just going to dim the lights. So as you can see, this light globe with all the current flowing through it is much brighter than the two light globes which only have part of the current flowing through them. In the next video, we're going to be looking at power, and this will explain the brightness of the lights. But for now, let's have a think about the amount of current and voltage flowing through each of these components. OK, let's start by measuring the total voltage drop and total current flow through the circuit. So the current flowing through the circuit is equal to 3.7 milliamps. The voltage drop provided by the power supply is equal to 12.33 volts. Have a think about how much current and how much voltage drop is going to occur across each of these globes. OK, let's see if you're right. Through this first globe, we're going to have all the current flowing. So we will have 3.7 milliamps of current flowing through this globe here. Now when the current leaves this globe, it has a choice of which of these two globes it wants to flow through. As these two globes are very similar, we'd expect half the current to flow through one and half the current to flow through the other. So half of 3.7 is 1.85 milliamps. Let's check that prediction. Our milliameter tells us that we've got 1.8 milliamps flowing through this globe here, which is in line with our prediction. Let's check this second globe as well. We've got 1.9 milliamps flowing through this second globe. So the 1.8 plus the 1.9 adds to give us our 3.7 milliamps. So that is in line with what we were expecting. Let's now consider the voltage drop. This is a bit harder. We're going to make, need to make use of Ohm's law that we looked at in the previous video. We've got twice as much current 
flowing through this light globe as these light globes. We know that these light globes are all very similar, so we can expect them to have a similar resistance. So Ohm's law tells us that the voltage drop across a component is equal to the current flowing through it times the resistance. So if this light globe has twice as much current as these light globes and the same resistance, we'd expect this light globe to have twice the voltage drop of these two light globes. So the voltage drop across the entire circuit is 12.3 volts. So we would expect two thirds of the voltage drop to occur across this component and then the remaining one third occurs across the parallel part here. So each of these should experience one third of that total voltage drop. So the voltage drop across this one, two thirds of 12.3 gives us 8.2 and the voltage drops across these ones will be 4.1 each. Let's check that now and see if our prediction is correct. So our multimeter is telling us that we've got a voltage drop of 9.7 volts across this one. So 9.7 is slightly higher than the 8.2 that we were predicting. Let's see what happens to the voltage drop across these other light globes. So we were expecting 4.1 volts. So we end up with a voltage drop of 2.48 volts across these light globes. So the two, approximately 2.5 plus 9.6 gives us the 12.1, which is 2.2 volts lower than the voltage supplied by the battery. So that slightly lower voltage drop is going to be explained by the voltage drop across these wires. Now this one was slightly higher than we were expecting. These two were slightly lower than we were expecting. So this is left as an exercise for you. Can you think why these results are slightly different to what we expect? Let's do one final example of a combination circuit. We've got a power supply here supplying 10 volts. The current goes through a couple of parallel components. We've got a resistor here with a resistance of 4 ohms. We've got a resistor here with a resistance of 2 ohms. And the question is once again, calculate the current through and voltage across each component. So the best way to do a question like this is to start by considering this parallel part of the circuit. What we can do is calculate R parallel, which is the equivalent resistance or the effective resistance of this part of the circuit. So let's calculate that now. We know that 1 on R parallel is equal to 1 on R1, which is 1 on the 4 ohm resistor, plus 1 on the 2 ohm resistor. So 1 on R parallel is equal to 1 on 4 plus 1 on 2, which is equal to all over 4, we've got 1 plus 2, so this is equal to 3 quarters. And so this tells us that R parallel is the inverse of this thing, and so it's equal to 4 thirds ohms. And now what we can do is we can work out the total resistance for the circuit. So we've got the resistance from the parallel part and also the resistance from this part, resistor which is in series with that part. So R total is equal to R parallel plus the resistance of the 3 ohm resistor. So that is equal to 4 thirds plus 3 which is equal to 4 and 1 third ohms. So that's the total resistance of the circuit. We can now use this total resistance to work out the total current through the circuit. So we've got I total will equal V total over R total, which is equal to the 10 volts, which is the total voltage drop across the circuit, divided by the 4 and the third. And so this gives us a total current 
of 2.3 amps. And we know that the current split, some goes through the 4 ohm, some through the 2 ohm, but it all goes through the 3 ohm. So we know that the current through the 3 ohm resistor is equal to 2.3 amps. So now we can work out the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor because we've got our current through it and our resistance. So V is equal to the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor is equal to the current through the 3 ohm resistor times the resistance of the 3 ohm resistor. So this is 2.3 times 3. And so the voltage drop is equal to 6.9 volts. Now, we know that some of the voltage drop occurs across the 3 ohm resistor and the rest of the voltage drop occurs across this parallel part of the circuit. So we know that the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor and that has to be equal to the initial voltage which is the 10 volts minus the 6.9 which is the drop across this resistor here. So Solving this, we get 3.1 volts. And so now we have the voltage drop across each of these. And so now we can calculate the current through each of these components. So I through the 4 ohm resistor is equal to the voltage drop of the 4 ohm resistor over the resistance of the 4 ohm resistor, which is 3.1 on 4. And that gives us 0 0.78 amps. So now let's calculate the current flow through the 2 ohm resistor. The current flow through the 2 ohm resistor is equal to the voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor over the resistance of the 2 ohm resistor. And so that is equal to the 3.1 volts over the 2 ohms. So that is equal to 1.6 amps. So there's many different approaches we can take to solve a problem like this. We've solved it now, but another way to work out these currents would be to realise that because this resistor, the 4 ohm resistor, has twice the resistance of the 2 ohm resistor, the 2 ohm resistor gets two thirds of the current and the 4 ohm resistor gets one third. So we could just work out those fractions of the total current if we wanted to instead of solving it this way. But either way works. So one place where you traditionally come across series and parallel circuits is Christmas tree lights. About 10 years ago, in the olden days, Christmas tree lights were all made in series. Christmas tree lights back then were constructed from incandescent bulbs. And when one of those bulbs went out, as it was in series with all the other bulbs in the circuit, this caused a break in the circuit and all your Christmas tree lights went out. And so what you'd need to do is get a replacement bulb and try it in every single socket along the way until you found the broken bulb. If you had a current surge or something which had caused the Christmas tree light to blow in the first place, then it was possible that more than one bulb had blown. And if you had two bulbs blown, that meant that it took an awfully long time to find the two broken globes and replace them both. So as wiring became cheaper, Christmas tree light manufacturers got tuned into this and started constructing the Christmas tree lights with sections of about 8 to 10 Christmas tree lights in series and then these sections in parallel with the other sections. So now when one Christmas tree light went out, the section of 8 to 10 lights all went out but at least you only had to try replacing each of the bulbs in that section of 8 to 10. So this allowed for Christmas tree light chains to get much longer as it wasn't as hard to replace the bulbs. What's happened now is that the incandescent light bulbs have been outdated a bit. In the next video we'll be looking at why LED lights are so much better than incandescent lights. But now we have Christmas tree lights that are made with LED lights and they're completely in parallel so that if one bulb goes out, it doesn't affect the rest of the bulbs. So this is why we can have such long chains. For example, this is a typical chain of Christmas tree lights, fairly cheap from the shops and it contains 600 lights. This would have been impossible with that old technology when all the lights were in series. So that's a nice example of series and parallel circuits. 
Special thanks to Jonathan Horner and Sebastian Frick for help with filming this video and for some input.